Hello children. Today we are going to study about adaptations. Adaptations in animals. Now what do you mean by adaptation? Adaptations are changes in the body organs, in their functions, in the features which help an organism to survive in its habitat. Now what is an habitat? A habitat is a place or an area in which an organism naturally lives and reproduces and this habitat provides food, shelter, air, water for that organism. So now we are going to study about the different types of adaptation. Basically adaptations are of two types. One is a structural adaptation which involves some part of the organism's body like teeth, body covering, breathing organs, organs of movement which are structured in such a way which help that particular animal to be able to cope up with the environment in which it lives. And behavioral adaptations are those adaptations, those activities, those behavior, those actions which an animal adopts uh, in order to be able to survive in its environment or habitat. The first adaptation we are going to talk about are the body coverings. Now we human beings can wear clothes. If we feel cold, we, wear, we will wear something warm to keep ourselves warm. But animals do not have clothes. They cannot wear clothes to protect them from different weather conditions. Nature has provided them with a body covering which uh, helps them to live in a particular habitat and protect themselves from the climate, extreme climates and also to protect them from hunting animals. First, we are going to talk about scales. Bodies of fish and reptiles, they are covered with scales. Now, these scales vary in size and shape and structure. Most of the reptiles have horny scales uh, to prevent water loss. Snakes also have scales. Now these scales help them to move on the land. The next is shell. Shell is a hard outer covering that protects animals when they are in danger. Animals like snails, tortoises, turtles, they have hard shells. When these animals are in danger, what do they do? They withdraw their head and limbs into the shell. And nobody will come to know whether it is an animal or is it a shell or an ordinary piece of stone or a rock. Next is feathers. Now feathers cover the body of the birds. They help them during flying and they also give a shape to the bird. Birds use these feathers to keep them warm and there are different types of feathers like flight feathers, down feathers, body feathers, each having or performing different types of function. Then you have some animals which live in very cold regions like polar bear, yak. Their body are covered with a thick layer of fur. Now this fur helps them to keep themselves warm in the extreme cold climate. Then we have animals like sheep with, which body is covered with wool. And um, fur or wool help the animal to keep them warm in very cold climates. Then we have insects. The body of insects is covered with a hard body covering. And that body covering is made up of a substance called chitin. So these different types of uh, body coverings help different types of animals to live in their habitat. The next type of adaptation is in terms of breathing organs. Now breathing is an essential feature for all living things. Animals living in different habitats have different organs which help them to breathe. It's very uh, tiny microscopic organisms like amoeba, paramecium, they breathe through their body surface because they are single celled animals, they do not have uh, different organs for different functions. So they are single celled organisms. So they breathe through their body surface. Then there are certain animals like earthworm which use their skin as a breathing organ. They are moist. The skin is moist and 
that moist skin helps it to breathe and even an adult frog when it is in water it breathes through its skin moist skin then you have insects insects like grasshopper cockroaches mosquitoes flies they have special organs called spiracles which are actually tiny air holes which are fo- found along the side of the insect's body air enters the body through these spiracles and then it is expelled out to the same structures this is how an insect breathes then you have fish aquatic animals most of the aquatic animals like fish prawn crabs they breathe with the help of gills these animals like fish prawn crab they take in water through their mouth this water passes through the gills and the oxygen is absorbed by the gills and reaches every part of the body then these gills expel out the carbon dioxide into the water then mammals like human beings and then birds reptiles and adult amphibians like frogs they breathe with their lungs they have a pair of lungs which is connected to a windpipe which is also called as a trachea and air reaches to the lungs through the nostrils we these animals they breathe through their nose the air is taken in and from the nose it goes to the windpipe and from the windpipe it reaches the lungs and the carbon dioxide is exhaled out back to the same path so therefore different animals different types of organisms have different organs for breathing next we come to movement all animals move so there are animals which live on land majority of these animals which live on land they move with the help of their legs most of them have four legs two in the front which are called as four limbs and two at the back which are called as the hind limbs some animals like dogs cats tigers they move using all four legs but then there are some other animals which only use their hind limbs like um, frogs and kangaroo they are very good leapers they are, they have well developed hind limbs and they hop on their hind limbs they use their short fore limbs also for movement and then human beings also use their legs to walk and run their hands which are their fore limbs they are arranged in such a way that their fingers help them to hold objects and to do other activities aquatic animals move with the help of fins and tail especially the fish moves with the help of fin they swim in water using their fins and tail frogs and ducks use their webbed feet to swim dolphins and whales they have modified fore limbs into f- uh, flippers seals and penguins also use their flippers to swim therefore different aquatic animals have different organs which help them to swim in water next is insects most insects like butterfly moth they have wings which help them to fly and then there are other uh, insects like spiders bed bugs ants which crawl with the help of their legs insects have six legs three pairs of legs help these insects to crawl on the ground grasshoppers hop with the help of their hind legs and then we have some water insects like the water boatman which swims in water using its legs as oars then birds usually fly they have a pair of wings which help them to fly and these wings are actually modified fore limbs their fore limbs are modified into wings they have light bodies and by moving their wings up and down birds push themselves in the air and fly they also use their two legs to perch on the branches of the trees and also to hop on the ground some birds like emu ostrich and penguin they cannot fly because they have very heavy bodies and their wings are also not very strong they have weak wings so they do not fly and now uh, movement in reptiles lizards and crocodile they crawl using their short legs snakes do not have legs so they move by pushing their body against the ground in a zigzag manner with the help of the scale and their flexible backbone The next adaptation is on the basis of the eating habits. Animals that eat plants which are called herbivorous animals, they have very sharp front teeth, incisors 
which help them to cut the parts of the plant and then they have large flat back teeth which are the premolars and molars which help them to grind their food then there are certain animals like elephant which has a long uh, trunk and uh, giraffe which have a long neck which help these animals to break the parts of the plant or leaves which are on the top of the trees then you have the uh, other type of animals which are carnivorous animals lions tigers wolves these are some of the carnivorous animals and they have they since they eat flesh they have long sharp teeth and claws which help them to tear the flesh of the animals they even have strong legs which help them to run fast and catch their prey snakes are also carnivorous animals so they use their scales to move fast on the ground and um, then they have also have special uh, uh, fangs to be in able to be able to uh, catch their prey some of the snakes swallow their prey fully so they have adaptations according to that then you have birds like eagles and vultures they they are carnivorous birds they have very sharp claws and beaks and they which help them to catch their prey and tear its flesh then you have another type of animals which are called as parasites now these animals either live on the body of some on another living organism or they live inside the body of another living organism and they depend on them for their food and such animals are called as parasites mosquitoes fleas leeches these are parasites which live on the body of the animals and they do not have teeth instead they have sucking tubes in their mouth which um, help them to suck the blood from their host animal then there are certain other parasites which live inside the body like worms tapeworms and roundworms they also have special sucking parts which help them to suck the blood uh, from their host body now the other type of uh, adaptation we are going to talk about is the behavioral adaptation animals living in very cold regions they undergo a special pr- process called as hibernation lot of animals undergo hibernation during extreme winter conditions when there is no food they it's very difficult to find food in such harsh weathers so they hibernate they go for a long winter sleep and in during that time their body becomes inactive and this is one way of avoiding the harsh climate and then when the weather changes and it becomes favorable then these animals come out of their hibernation and then they live their normal life there's another uh, process which is called as estivation which is very similar to hibernation but this is done by animals which live in very hot regions so they become very inactive during the severe summer times examples of animals which uh, follow this estivation are crocodiles and salamanders then you have something called as migration every year some animals and birds move away from one place to another to avoid the harsh environmental conditions which are prevailing in their habitat they do this in search of food or to reproduce or to save themselves from the harsh climate this mass movement of animals to long distances in response to change in climate is called as migration the arctic tern is a seabird that travels from the arctic region during the beginning of the winters to the antarctic region and back to the arctic region at the end of the winters so it makes the longest migration about 40000 kilometers every year and it is therefore also called as the champion of migration then you have siberian white cranes which migrate to india during winters from south siberia to breed that means to reproduce to lay eggs fish like salmon live in sea water it also travels long distances to reach fresh water rivers to lay eggs the young ones that hatch from these eggs travel back to the sea then again they come when they become adult again to lay eggs they travel back to the rivers insects like monarch butterflies migrate from canada to mexico during winters and return at the onset of summers these are the different ways animals adapt themselves in order to survive thank you